Okay, so let's go over the players then. And uh, so McElroy. The, the thing with McElroy, though, and look, you're not going to make much money off of him this week. He's 7-1. He's a clear favorite. The, the, the thing with McElroy, though, is he historically gets off to slow starts on the PGA Tour. After he starts over in Europe, he comes on. He doesn't seem to play well, but this is the first event that he's ever, this is the earliest that he's ever won. Wait, this, I'm trying to think. Yeah, because he won in 2012. So this is the earliest he's ever won on the PGA Tour calendar year uh, wise. And that might have even been a little later because this is maybe a little earlier even, I think. The yeah, hunt- it could have been because they, they've changed the format. I mean, sometimes I know he won at Bay Hill, and I think he won when that was. I think he used to start at Bay Hill and then go down and then come back. So. Yeah, so March or, usually somewhere. Or they start Doral and then go to to Honda and then whatever. But I know he's won Bay Hill. So, um, but he came from behind. He was not playing well. Barely made the cut, and then he they had a freaky round on that Sunday and won. You know, his interesting is that McElroy started off pretty well here. He's got the win back in 2012. He lost in a playoff to Russell Hendley. But his last three appearances, 59th and two missed cuts. And this year, he's played twice on the PGA Tour, 24th and 66th. He's only got three top 15s in nine appearances here. So it's not like this has been a great golf course, even though he's got a win and a playoff loss. This is actually a week to, to, to just, you know what, uh, just normally we don't ever advocate taking low numbers anyway. And this is definitely a week I'd say skip it because Rory just has not played well here lately. I don't know why, but he just hasn't. Well, I, I don't think he wants to play. I think he wants to take the time off and work on his game this time of year. But, you know, with, he lives at the Bears Club. So he lives at where Jack lives. And I'm sure Jack has said to him, you know, I really want you to, I need you to play my event for, you know, for media and for the galleries and, He's probably doing it as a favor to Jack more than anything. And so I don't, I think he knows his course doesn't suit him. He's not, you know, he does, he's kind of was warming up. He like, you know, he played in Europe because he had, um, you know, he played over in, in Dubai and he's got a big sponsor there that, that he played that. So he's one of those people that warms up later. And I'm sure this, his focus is going to be Bay Hill, TPC and the Masters. Yeah, because, again, as we said, these next two events, everybody's going to be playing. So if you play this event, you have three weeks in a row, and that's up to you. I mean, I found that interesting stat that we talked about a couple weeks ago, or it might have been last week, that Justin Thomas has never won on the PGA Tour in his third consecutive week. That's just a trend that I found out. Because, uh, you know, looking over his wins and realizing, yeah, wait a second, I, he's never won on his third consecutive week. And sure enough, he was playing excellent. And then he goes to uh, his last event, Genesis, and he's terrible in his third yeah. straight week. So may, maybe he maybe he wouldn't have even played it if it wasn't a, a signature event. Maybe there's Probably. something about his third week that he just he, he realizes he's just for whatever reason, he needs time off after two yeah. weeks. I mean, and especially now, like usually he plays this week because he's home and, um, you know, basically lives around the corner. But he, he's I think he's focusing on, you know, a, a big a big event like TPC. Again, they're all focusing on you know, getting ready for the majors. And and he does better when he's home practicing. I think when you're playing so much, you don't get to work on your game as much. You've just kind of got to go with what you've got. And he's really worked hard towards the end of the year to get his swing better. He's flattened his swing out. He's not overturning as much. And so he's he has more control of his ball. He's a great short game player anyway, so that part he doesn't have to worry about. But he's, he works with his dad on his swing, and he probably was kind of losing it a little bit, and he needed to go back and work on it some more. All right. Um, and then you pretty much, like I said before, after that, after McElroy, it's just – wide open so let's talk about so i don't think even though cam's the second choice i don't think this is a good place for cam young even though he was 16th and he was even par though when he was 16th in uh, 2022 so it's not like he had a great week but just to show you how tough the golf course can be when you're 16th and even par but yeah yeah, i just don't think this is a good fit for cam's game that's just me i don't know what do you think well 
you know, and then the thing is, he, I think he's going to win one of the weaker events because he's got to break, you know, the ice. And it's so hard, the pressure from everybody talking about it. You know, um, Scotty had a little bit for a while there. They kept saying he's going to be great and he couldn't break through. And then once he did, it was all over. Cam is a little bit different to that because Cam hits it a little bit un more uncontrollable <laughs> than Scheffler. So, uh, but he's such a nice kid. I really, you know, his family are great. His father teaches him and he works really hard. Um, I would have thought he would do better at Riviera because the golf course reminds me of Sleepy Hall in Connecticut where he grew up and, uh, and played a lot. Um, very similar looking golf course. So this one, this, it doesn't wreck it. You know, it's a lot of water if you miss hit a shot here because he hits it a mile. And I didn't but, see his name pop up anywhere in the stats we were going over. And now he'll probably win because of that. But, of course. Um, yeah, but it's not a good golf. I agree. There's too much water on this golf course. He hits it long and wild at times. Um, he's getting better. but <clears throat> And he's... His short game is letting down a little bit. I think this one with the greens being grainy, he's, you know, these, these greens are grainy. I mean, it's, it's Tiff Eagle and, you know, they change them all the time to keep the grain out, but you can't help it here on the South Florida. All right. Um, let's now go over again. So as far as I'm going to talk about some of the guys that I'm, I think I'm going to pick because I'm not going to go too crazy this week as far as trying to figure out because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I usually don't have more than seven on a week. That's high. Six, five is average. But you know what? I'm going to do eight players this week. Wow. Because I don't, again, normally I have time to do this and I don't have a whole lot of time and I want to get my picks officially on the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to have Cole as, since he's the lowest odds at 25 to one, I'll, I'll make him my top choice. So talk. So Cole, again, he just looks like this is a really good fit for him, this golf course. It is, and and you know what he he lives there locally again, and he's used to those greens. I mean, you got to, you know how we talked about Paspalum, which is a horrible grass to putt. Um, it's sticky and it doesn't, it's ne never putts true. Um, I mean, that's why you see these guys in Mexico last week looking at a putt and going, "How could it break that way when it didn't break that way coming back?" And and they they just never putt true. They look beautiful, but they're really hard to to putt. Eric Cole loves. Florida greens. It's what he's grown up with. He puts them really well. So he's, he's definitely someone to look, look for. All right. And then I'm also going to uh, look, even though I'm going to take one guy that does not fit the stats and that's going to be Jaeger. So he's 35 to one. So I'll put 15 on Jaeger. I'll put 20 on Cole. So Jaeger is just, I, I think it's a good fit for him as far as timing not the course exactly, but let's keep in mind, he has done better all four times he's played here. He went from miscut to 78th to 48th to 14th. So he keeps getting better every time he plays here. He's made 21 of his last 22 cuts. Wow. And he's finished third in two of his last three events, including Mexico last week. So I just think this is a good time to take him, even though it may not be the perfect course um, uh, for him. But that's not always the case. It doesn't like that. You were just joking, but no, it, it sometimes it just doesn't matter. If you're just playing well, you're playing well. That's just and right. and, and he 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 seems to 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 know how to play the golf course now because he's playing it better and better every time he gets there. Well, and I think the point that you just made, which is the key is that it's all about how you're playing now, how your game is now. I mean, as much as we talk about which courses suit and, you know, and, you know, weather and tee times, but if you're playing well, you can overcome an awful lot. Okay. Now, uh, the other player I'm going to take, like I said, I'm taking Justin Rose. So I'm going to put 10 on Rose at 55 to 1. Rose um, actually has a pretty good record here. He has four top 15s and seven appearances. Um Three of those are top fives, and he is trending in the right direction. He was 11th last time out at Pebble, so he's had some time off. But, yeah, we were just going over the stats. Stats seem to favor him here, too. And let's keep in mind, Justin Rose plays well on tough golf courses. That's true. I mean, he is a U.S. Open winner, so no question. And, he, you know, and he's got that gold medal on that hard golf course at Gil Hands down south. So he, he definitely – and he's got a great scrambling game. And I like his golf swing. So he – 
He's one that can, even though he hits it right to left, he's really good at fading it when he has to. So he's definitely someone that should be looked at for sure. Uh, I'm also going to, like I said, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, I, he was almost not on my pick because I don't usually do eight, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to add Alex Noren. Um, he's 55 to one. I'll put 10 on Noren. Again, he was fifth in 2022. That was the last time he played here, did not play last year. He also has another top five out of five appearances. I'm surprised he hasn't played here more often because the golf course seems to fit his game. Uh, he's made nine straight cuts with two top fives. So, and, and believe it or not, even though he has 10 wins on the European Tour, he has never won a PGA Tour event. Hmm. So... And that's actually interesting because trend-wise, I'm going to throw another couple of trends at you regarding that. If you look at it, um, uh, five of the – no, actually, three of the last five winners made this their PGA maiden uh, victory. So three of the last five. Um, six of the 17 winners all time broke their maiden here. That's 35% of the winners on this golf course have actually – uh, never won before on the PGA Tour. And for anybody that we've talked about that has won before here, keep this in mind, no one has ever won this event at PGA National twice. How about that? We don't have any wow. two-time winners. So, wow. all right. I'm also taking Bo Hostler at 45 to 1. So I'm going to put 10 bucks on Hostler. Hostler... 16th in 2022, his last appearance. That's his best appearance out of three. And he has, he went from 128th last July to 64th now. He's made 14 of 15 cuts with 12 top 30s, four top 10s, and a runner up at the Zozo. He's coming off a of 24th wow. at the Genesis. So he's playing lights out. He's never played this good before in his life. So that's really good. That's. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Someone to watch. Uh, also, I'm going to put 10 bucks on Gim. We talked about Gim. This seems to be a good fit uh, for Gim, too, which is nice. Uh, because Gim, if we take a look at his... Uh, uh, let's see. If we take a look at his uh, history and his form here. Um, matter of fact, Jared took Gim last week. I'm, and I'm surprised he didn't take him this week. Because in his last three events, Gim has finished 13th, 12th, and 8th. So he's got three straight top 15s. And here's the here's probably the reason he's not taking them. But I'm going to, and I already knew this, but I was taking him anyway. He's played here three times. He's never made the cut. And his combined scoring is 20 over par. But. In those three years he played here, he was the 234th ranked player, the 238th ranked player, and the 454th ranked player. He's obviously a better player now. He has experience on the golf course, and he's playing the best that he's played over a three-event stretch. So yeah, there, and we, we, you know, we, we should. The stats say he should play well here, but yes, if you are again, I'm just guessing. Maybe that's why Jared decided not to take him, but. It, it, you know, that's something, too, to consider, is that you might just say, you know what, I just can't take him. He's never made a cut there, and I don't know how you're going to go from never making a cut to winning. So I can understand yeah, if you want to do that. it makes it hard because, you you know, you have this – as a player, you, you when we talk about it, you you either like the course or not, but, but he's, he's playing well. The only difference is last week, the last few weeks, there wasn't that much water. Yeah, Whereas true. this one, there's a – you know, the trouble is when you hit one offline here – it's you're dropping it's you know it's stroke and distance <laughs> well that's the reason i mean it, i, I might have changed it but the stats are good for him as far as he hits the ball straight he was good at the what is it i think both the scrambling and the sand saves i believe so he was i think at yeah, all that's of them. true yeah so um all right anyway next up uh i'm gonna put 10 bucks on maverick mcneely again i just think mcneely's is starting to get close and we know uh he's got the game um, and he's a player, too, that um, could actually be involved in uh, your insider report, which I want to go over before we end the show, because McNeely is somebody that's really had to come back as well. Um, but he's starting to get his game going again now. And he was sixth uh, the, the, uh, the week before or two weeks ago and then 13th last week. So he's got two good events coming in and he's played here twice. 
he missed a cut once, and he finished 11th in his first appearance. But I'm still surprised you're getting 80 to 1 in this field for Maverick McNeely because we know he's a very talented player. Yeah, that that's interesting that he's that high up because the first year he was working with um, Alex Murray from Scotland, who's he uh, based in San Francisco and has basically taken Mav from a teenager, actually from I think he even started in playing golf. So he's had him all that time, and then um, Mav met. Um, a, an LPGA player that lived in Vegas and was working with another coach. And so he dropped Alex and so they could work together and, and he moved to Vegas. So he moved away from California and um, it changed his game totally with this new coach. And, and uh, we all thought it was a mistake because we've known him and Alex. And I think Alex is a brilliant teacher. And I thought, I mean, how do you go with someone that's had you since you were a kid and then try to change to different technique when you've just made it on the PGA Tour? So it, we thought it was a mistake, but this caused an injury. And then he had at the new swing, um, getting some extra power, then caused an injury with his shoulder. He had to have shoulder surgery, which turned out good because he met the rehab, his new girlfriend at the oh, rehab. She was a rehab go. instructor, but... Um, so helped him with his rehab. And I think she travels, probably travels with him and helps her now with his rehab or working on it, you know, with his, um, his uh, injury. And, uh, but he went back to Alex at the beginning of the year and uh, worked with him last winter. And we thought, you know, he's going to have a better year this year. And sure enough, it's the first couple he had to work his way in, but I think he's going to have a great year. Well, uh, this could be uh, a good opportunity for him in this week of this field. Then the other player is uh, Novak, like I said. I'll put five on Novak uh, because his odds are 110 to 1. But Novak um, is, is – I don't think he's ever had back-to-back top 10s in his career on the PJ Tour. So he finished eighth in his last two events. He does have a KFT win. And he's also been better in all three events here. He was 57th. Uh, I, actually, he was 57th miscut but he was eight over par the first time five over par the second time and then he finished 29th last year at three under par so uh-huh. he's been getting better here and he's got the back-to-back top tens so that combination and a big number i figured why not and uh, we saw him on the stats there too so um he may not be a, a bad long shot because again i don't think anybody is a bad long shot to tell you the truth anybody can win so all right so All right. those are my picks. I've given uh, Jared's picks. So who, give us a couple of players that you're thinking for now for your one and done option uh, that we've gone over this. Uh, who 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 do you think you're gonna who who you're gonna consider here? Well, I was going with Lowry until we heard about his stats. So now I'm really backing off of that. And Fitzpatrick, I was gonna keep him for later on in the year too, but he doesn't seem to get off to a very good start. So. I liked it. I liked Steven Yeager. I've liked him from quite a while. So I, I'm, I may go with him. I've already taken JT Poston. I, I don't like to go with someone as high up as Russell Henley, but Rus- what are the stats on Russell again? Well, Henley uh, has won here before. Let's see. He's got six top 25s out of nine. Uh, three top tens, two top fives, and a win. The win was in 2014. He beat Rory that year in a four-man playoff in 2014. And this is also something that might work in his uh, favor. Um, in his last six visits here, he's been better each time. Miscut, 43, 24, 20, 8, 3. So that's his last six appearances here. And, and keep in mind, two years before that stretch, he won. So he won. Then he defended his title. Didn't do much. Then the, the trend started from miscut all the way to eight, to third. So he's trending in the right direction. And he's somebody that, based on that trend, is not exactly a bad uh, idea. Um, but again, nobody's ever won this event twice. So keep that in mind. Maybe he'll Maybe he'll be the first. Because he what, is, what he, about the last few weeks? What did he do the last three weeks? Um, the last three weeks, he's finished 24th, 58th, and 4th. The 4th was that Sony Open when it looked like he was actually going to win that week. And then he didn't play well down the stretch. And he missed out on the three-man playoff um, by, I think, a stroke. 
But then after that, he finished 58th and 24th. Mm. So, but that's Russell I Henley. Steven Yeager's odds were pretty good too. I mean, he looked like he's playing well. I think you got to still trend how you're playing at the moment. Yeah, Yeager. Usually that means you're putting well. Yeah, Yeager definitely has a, a better trend, current trend, and um, course trend though. You know, still favors Henley, but Yeager's playing better right now. Uh, let's see, Mitchell. Uh, is playing better. He's got four top 30s in his last six with one top 10. He's, he's won here before. Berger. Now, Berger, um, also a part of your insider report because Berger, tell us a little bit about, because Berger and Woodland are playing this week and uh, they're very good on this golf course. Berger's got three top fives out of seven, a runner-up in 2015, and his last four years, he finished fourth, didn't play, fourth, and didn't play. So not sure. I know why he didn't play last year, but I'm not sure why he didn't right. play a couple years ago. Um, he hasn't played as well as Alatoris on the comeback. 28th, miscut 39th. Um, and then, by the way, Woodland, I only bring him up also because of uh, he's coming back from that brain surgery. He's made all nine cuts here. Nine for nine. Four top fives. Excuse me, four top tens. And he was a runner-up in 2017. But in his return, he has three missed cuts and a 39th. You would think it's going to take Gary Wooden a little bit more time to get back into the swing of things. No pun intended. But it is incredible how how quickly, and even the fact that Zelatoris has come back at all to play on the injury. But it just shows you, nowadays with medicine, you can't say what we, we, we've said before. Everything's different nowadays. And it looks like Zalatoris uh, has bucked the trend, so-called, of uh, being able to come back from that injury. I, I would have, I mean, I thought Jared was crazy taking him. I thought he'd take him a good year and I didn't know if he'd ever really recover because, um, but I looked at the changes in his golf swing and um, I, I really like it. What they've done is, I mean, he was like crazy arm speed and ball speed was fantastic. And that's why he could hit it so far with being, you know, it's kind of lean and strong. He's one of those strong wiry guys. And but I and it was such talk on his back uh, that I it was only going to be a matter of time before he hurt himself and pretty seriously. So, you know, the first time he had surgery and then he injured it again. And now that his back is fused, I didn't think he'd be able to come back. But I looked at his golf swing. The changes he's made are brilliant. Um, he's slowed his swing speed down to 106, but he's still far enough that he's competitive. But I kept his ball in play because of it. You know that extra that extra 10 yards of the 10 miles an hour gave him that extra 15 yards but it also created you know a, a big span of how crooked he could hit it so he's, he's actually got to control but the main thing is his putting what he did was once he was injured he really couldn't um, spend that much time hitting so they worked a lot on video changing his swing by looking at it what he needs to do but with the putter he changed to the what we call the broomstick, the long putter broomstick. And that's made an enormous difference because when he, the thing, good thing about the broomstick is that you're, you, you're very pendulum because you've got it really upright. And, and you kind of, with the new technique, this is another thing we talk about with coming back because of this new technical stuff that they have with these putters where they square themselves at impact if you just let it flow. Okay. Um, is an absolute enormous improvement for him because his short putts, I mean, he made me nervous watching when he was two feet from the yeah, ball. Yeah. I mean, and he would take it back shot and the ball would just go straight left. And then he started to yip it and then he would shove it. And, and, and it was really a problem. And I didn't think that he could overcome that. Well, now with this putter, this, this putter, you just basically take it back and it, squares itself at impact and so it has made an enormous difference in his short game and so with the change in his golf swing and with this i should have paid more attention because when jared did it i thought i'm we're on, on our bet i was like great have him because he's he's no way he can come back yeah but i i then i had to study to see how he was doing that well so now i can see why it's amazing i mean again it's uh it's great it's uh you know it it because having a player like him not 
be able to return to form at such a young age would have been really bad for the game. So it's great that, uh, yeah, he, he's, and the funny the thing is, is I, I, I took him, I know you weren't on the show, of course, but I took him in the, in the event at Genesis that week and he was 50 to one. I was like, man, I'm going to keep, a matter of fact, I put, I put, I, I bet 25 bucks on him at 50 to one. So I had a thousand dollars on him. I love it. And I lose because Hideki Matsuyama decides to have a course record on Sunday. <laughs> Otherwise, Zal Torres is winning that event. Uh, you know, wow. so because right. I know List and him were tied and stuff, but you know, Zal Torres was still going this way. List was going that way, and right. you know, Zal Torres would have wound up winning. But yeah, um, but the but the problem now is is that you're not getting fifty to one anymore. Right now, it's back to probably twenty five to one. It'll probably be twenty five or thirty to one next week at Bay yeah. Hill. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, a good course for him. Um, okay, so you know what? I, I might have, I might even took myself myself into taking Henley in one and done because I don't take Henley very often myself, and, I, and sometimes he's not even a player to take in one and done. Yeah, but it does. But and and the only reason I because I was thinking, I'm saying, you know what? We this has been such an untrendy year. Like everything has not gone trend wise. That maybe this is exactly what's going to happen. He'll be the first one to win two times. Since nobody's ever done it, I can see that trend being broken because every other trend has been broken this year watching golf. So I might actually think of taking Henley myself. Um, let's go over some other ones that uh, you might. I mean, Minwoo Lee is playing this week, but he was 26 last year, so he has played here, but his trend line is going the opposite way. So he's going. He, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wait on him until. I mean, he's he's again, you know, he, he's game changed, turned around when he went to the broomstick, but. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think it takes him a while to warm up. Uh, Tom Kim will be playing it for the first time. I know Jared was thinking of taking Kim. Um, so he might be in an option for, for Jared at one and done. Uh, he's been playing pretty well. All, all top 35s in his last three, but no top 15s. But again, it's very hard. He's not played there though, has he? No. And that's a trend. Matter of fact, if you look at it, uh, the average number of appearances prior to winning this event and out of 15, I didn't use 17 and I didn't use the first, I think one or two, because obviously that doesn't make any sense to do that. But, um, it, the average number is only 4.3 and it was 3.3, I believe until Kirk won last year when his 12th appearance, but this is interesting. So even though it only takes three or four times to win here, Ernie Els is the only player to win here, making his first appearance, and he did it in 2008. So, and that was the second year the event was played at PGA National. So, plus he knew the course very well because he lived there at the time. Okay, so there you go. So, being your first uh, venture out to PGA National probably not going to work in your favor. But hey, Eric Cole almost won last year. So, but again, he lives there. So, there you go. So, so if you know the course, I mean, you have to know the golf course. So let's see. Out of the uh, out of the first timers, let me see. You've got Kim, um, and he doesn't live there, does he? Uh -uh. Uh, Rasmus he lives, he lives in Texas. Rasmus, uh, Nikolai's brother's playing this week. Rasmus, oh, wow. and keep in mind, Rasmus, who just missed out on a full time PGA Tour card, he'll be a, he'll be a full timer next year for sure. Um, he has eleven straight top thirties. This is over in Europe. 11 right. straight top 30s, eight top 12s, five top eights, two top fives, and a runner-up. So he's red hot over in Europe. Um, so he's never played here before. And let's see if I notice anybody else that is of significance that has never played here before. No, I don't think so. So that's about it. Um, well, the trouble is I took Hoy God last week and he let me down. Nikolai, he's yes. Been play yeah, Nick and he's been playing well. But um, I think both of them have, they met in, they they've, uh, they rented a place down in Florida. So they may be playing there every day right now. So, um, I, and maybe Rasmussen might be because um, Nikolai played in, in uh, Mexico. But that that fate, you know, as long as you know the golf course, I mean, if they're playing there every day because he's trying to acclimatize himself to the weather and the, the time change. So that might alleviate a little bit, but there's nothing like playing in competition to learn the course. All right. Other players, uh, let's see. Uh, Post on 
has never had a top 25 here in six appearances, but um, he's red hot. He's got 12 top 25s in his last 15, eight top 10s, three top fives, and a runner-up. Uh, let's see. On, who is one of Jared's picks, uh, two top fives out of five. So he has played well here before. He has three top 20s in his last five with two top fives. And, of course, the playoff loss when I picked him that week at Sony. And he couldn't win. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, ben On might be somebody. I, 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 I mean, I was, I'm a little bit worried with all that water because he's, he's gained that distance. I just don't know if he can control it. But I do like his game. I mean, I like that his new putting um, is, is improved. And, and he's, he gained 15 to 20 yards which this last winter, which is enormous. Uh, also, Connors, uh, who's made 12 straight cuts, is 45 to 1 in that range. And Connors uh, played the golf course twice, made one cut 59th, and that was back in 2018. He's only won twice on the PGA Tour, both at the Texas Open. Uh, mentioned Hostler, mentioned Norin, uh, mentioned Rose. So, yeah, so those are the ones uh, that we talked talk about there. Uh, what do you. What do you think about – by the way, I'm surprised Billy Horschel doesn't play this golf course better. He's got four top 20s out of 11, just one top five. But he's he's gone from starting the 23 season at 18th in the world. He's now 94th. Wow. So he's really uh, lost his game lately. Ricky Fowler has not played well uh, since winning. He was starting to play really well. He wins, and then all of a sudden he's not playing well again. Yeah, it took the pressure off, I guess. Uh, he, Pendra- has, he, he does a lot of a lot of uh, corporate outings and corporate stuff. Okay, uh, Pendrith is somebody that I was thinking of, but you know he's more of a heavy hitter, and I wasn't sure about that. Um, but it's interesting. He 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 was finished in his last six: eighth, miscut; tenth, miscut; uh, <laughs> ninth, miscut. So wow. if that continues, top ten. So yeah, um, that's funny. Well, and it, it's it's a golf course. Um, yeah, he he tends to hit a few offline. I mean, I like his game. I like his golf swing. Uh, it's it's probably not a good course. My, I was thinking. I look at that list. Keith Mitchell might be good here. Uh, yeah, Mitchell uh, has the win back in uh, let's see, it was about five years ago. And like I said, he's got four top 30s and six. He has, he has seemed to play better when the year begins. So he seems to play better at this time of year. So, yeah, if you're going to take Keith Mitchell on a one and done, you probably want to think about taking him something like this week. Mm-hmm. Um, this might even be the last good week to take him because, again, now the events are going to get a lot tougher and the fields are going to get a lot tougher. Right. And then it won't be early in the season anymore. So, yeah, he's not a bad idea for one and done. Similar to Henley in that he's won here before, but maybe that trend will break this week, uh, like every other Brent, the trend that's broken. Um, so uh, McCarthy is 50 to 1. Uh, he's f- missed four of six cuts here, but he does have a top five, and he's made eight straight cuts on tour. So uh, you would think. I don't think Danny hits it far enough for that golf course. Okay. Uh, Bazoon Hoot. Uh, and Glover are both around the same uh, number at around at eighty to one uh, number. Actually, Bazoon has got down to fifty five to one. Wow, he's wow. dropped considerably. Um, Interesting. Let's see, Wallace uh, Hubbard, who uh, Jared's taken this week, has been playing better. He's made six, uh, all six cuts this year, Hubbard, wow. and he does have two top fifteens out of seven on this golf course. Um, Interesting. That's a that's a good one, huh? Yeah. Um, his best finish was fourth at Pebble about a month ago. So, uh, yeah, again, Jared's going with On, Hubbard, Glover, Hogue, and Fitzpatrick as his picks. Dietrich's playing this week, but uh, he withdrew huh. from this event last year yeah, after I'm a glad first I round. I almost took him last week. That would have been a killer. Yeah, it killed me. And he hasn't played this week. He hasn't played this tournament has he? Uh, he withdrew last year after the first round. Yeah, he so was... I don't think you need to you need to know the golf course. 